Jay Smith Show starts right. Smith Show coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airwaves of ESPN Radio and ESPN News. 250 plus markets across the United States of America plus ESPN Radio on Sirius XM Channel 80 plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by mycomputercareer.edu. Training for a better life. Lots of stuff to get into, stuff percolating out of the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California. They've got a new head coach. We'll be talking about that. Of course, there's been a couple of epic Game 7s, Damian Lillard, C.J. McCollum, and the Portland Trail Blazers knocking off the Denver Nuggets uh, in Game 7 in the Mile High City yesterday afternoon. And then, of course, last night in the nation of Canada, Led by Kawhi Leonard's 41 points and buzzer winning, buzzer beating, game winning, game seven, two point shot from the right baseline over Joel Embiid. The Toronto Raptors are going to the Eastern Conference Finals courtesy of a 92 to 90 victory over the Philadelphia 76ers in game seven of the Eastern Conference semifinals last night in Toronto, Canada. We will definitely get into that in just a second. Obviously, Houston, Golden State, Game 6. Golden State, without Kevin Durant, takes out CP3, James Harden, and the Houston Rockets. We'll get into that in just a couple of minutes. First order of business is this game with the Raptors against the Philadelphia 76ers. We look at the Raptors and we look at Kawhi Leonard. 41 points, 16 of 39 shooting. Ladies and gentlemen, he only, fought, he only shot 41% from the field last night. Shot two or nine from three-point range. That's 22%. That's far lower than what he's been shooting throughout this series. But he was a monster all series long, averaging over 33, averaging better than 50% shooting, averaging better than 45% shooting from three-point range. He was an absolute monster. Could Jimmy Butler defend him? No. Could Tobias Harris defend him? No. Could Ben Simmons defend him? No. Could Joel Embiid defend him in the end? No. And without any help, because Siakam didn't have but 11 points. Gasol didn't have but seven. Danny Green didn't have but two. Kyle Lowry didn't have but ten. Seventeen pivotal points from Serge Ibaka, no doubt. But in the end, when it really, really counted, as you looked at the Toronto Raptors and everybody that came with it, they did not want the ball. They did not want the ball. <clears throat> there was only one person that wanted the ball, and that was Kawhi Leonard. And he got it, and the Philadelphia 76ers did little to nothing to be able to stop him. He was an absolute monster when it counted. He showed there's a difference between the creme de la creme and those who just want to be. There's a difference between superstars and everybody else. There's clearly a difference between superstars and stars. James Harden is a star. James Harden is a superstar during the regular season. During the postseason, we got to have a different discussion. But I'll get into that in just a second. I'm going to stay with Toronto and Philadelphia for this reason, and this reason primarily above all else. The Toronto Raptors, right now, when you look at Kawhi Leonard, my God, is there a difference between him and DeMar DeRozan? We can understand why Masai Ujiri, the general manager for the Toronto Raptors, elected to make that trade, knowing that Kawhi Leonard could potentially be and likely be a one-year rental. Stay in Toronto for one year, compete for a title, go for the title, et cetera, et cetera. And then after that, and then after that, turn around. And you know something? Lose him. But guess what? It was a risk that you're willing to make. No question. No question about it. But I do think there's a legitimate question as to whether or not Kawhi should leave for L.A. Clearly, when he wanted to leave San Antonio, that wasn't about basketball. That was a quality of life decision. He was bored living in San Antonio. Let's just call it what it is, y'all. This show is carried in San Antonio. I love the San Antonians out there. I love the Riverwalk. Not much else. Nice areas in the suburbs, movie theaters, restaurants, all of that stuff is true. But if you're looking for a little bit of excitement in your life in your 20s, let's just say there are other places, dare I say, more stimulating than San Antonio. Now, Kawhi, we don't know that to be the case because he never says anything. But we have to understand that's what we heard when he was in San Antonio. 
So if that's what we heard when he was in San Antonio, I can assure you of this. Outside of the weather being cold, he ain't got that problem in Toronto. Oh, there's a whole lot to do in, in Toronto. I, I can promise you that. When we talk about the words gorgeous, mosaic, take it from me. It truly, truly is. Let me move on. And transition to the Philadelphia 76ers. Because that's really where the story is. Toronto's about to go against Milwaukee. The Greek freak against Kawhi Leonard. Two of the top four players on the planet Earth going up against one another right now. That's a lot to discuss. And we will as the show progresses. Because off the top, I think that Milwaukee wins this series in six games. I don't think Kawhi Leonard has enough help. Which brings in the question whether or not it was worth Ujiri losing DeMar DeRozan for a guy, albeit better, considerably so, in Kawhi Leonard. Was it worth it for one year? But that's not either, That's neither here nor there. If you're the Philadelphia 76ers, you got an entirely different dilemma on your hands. First things first, do you keep Coach Brett Brown? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to sit here and advocate to meet you that the man should be fired when he just took them to within one basket of an, a berth to the Eastern Conference Finals. What I will say to you is this, though. People are going to look at Joel and B constantly on the perimeter, not on the block. They're going to question Brett Brown. They're going to look at Ben Simmons and no jump shot and the fact that there's been no visible development whatsoever in that category. They're going to look at Brett Brown. You're going to look at the combination of Tobias Harris and Jimmy Butler and say we can't keep both. We can only keep one. Which one do you keep? Is it Jimmy Butler? Sure. But if he's asking for max dollars, do you keep him then and lose Tobias Harris? Oh, by the way, does Tobias Harris want to stay there and play alongside Jimmy Butler? These are all issues the Philadelphia 76ers have to address, not to even mention their bench. Not to even mention their bench. But I will tell you this. And I will tell you this right here, right now. When I look at the Philadelphia 76ers, I'm proud of these brothers. And I got to tell you something else, too. I saw Joel and B crying like a baby last night. And there were people that were of this mindset. Because remember, the the, the, the Sixers turned over the ball, had clock violations, basically three of the last four possessions. It was a clumsily run final couple of minutes for the Philadelphia 76ers. But you can credit Toronto's defense in large part for that. And also Brett Brown's insatiable appetite for having Joel Embiid on the perimeter. Not the wisest way to go. Not the wisest route to take. But when I saw Joel Embiid crying, whereas most people would malign him for it, I'm not. I love seeing him. I don't know if it was necessary for Joel Embiid to be crying in a hallway while hugging and kissing his girlfriend. I'm not talking about that part. But damn near crying on the court, practically inconsolable when Mark Casal tried to, you know, pay homage to him. When all of that was going on, I'm here to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm here to tell you something straight up and down. When you look at a guy like Joel Embiid, Being that affected, I'm telling you right now, if you're a Philadelphia 76ers fan, although it absolutely positively is hurting your soul as we speak, I want to let you know something right here, right now. Joel and B and those tears you saw him streaming down his face and that pain you saw sifting through his body like that, It may end up being the best thing that ever happened to you. You see, to me, Joel Embiid, and it's not to disrespect him in any way, but to me, Joel Embiid became a man last night. Because let me tell you something right now. Ain't no more airplane flyings, joking around, chirping. When you lose a game seven and you lose it in that magnitude with Kawhi Leonard, Drilling a jumper over you that bounced in and out of the rim and then into the rim. About three or four bounces. Let's count them right here. He goes up, clock one, two, three, four. Four bounces. And then goes into the rim to win the series. To win the series. Let me tell y'all something right now. That's some pain that is not going to leave 
Joel and B for a very, 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 very long time. And when he comes back on the court next year and he's playing, he's going to remember every aching moment. And when that happens, ladies and gentlemen, could you imagine a monster, a beast like Joel and B? And I say that obviously complimentary. Could you imagine him even more focused? How he'll be if he's healthy? If I'm the 76ers, I leave this man alone. I make sure, work on his knees, work on his back, get him as close to 100% as you can possibly get him, get him in the best condition of his life, and then unleash him. Because nobody can stop Joel Embiid. Nobody can stop him. And what you're going to see with Joel Embiid is a man on a mission coming back. I think it's going to be to the benefit of the Philadelphia 76ers. Make no mistake about it. And I think it is something that would bode very, very well for them moving forward. 888 say ESPN is the number to call. It's 888-729-3776. That's one portion of the Stephen A. Smith show that I wanted to touch on. Here's the other. The Houston Rockets. John, do we have that sound from Tillman Fertitta? The owner for the Houston Rockets, Cat Pastor, do we have that? Talking to my producers here. Because let me tell y'all something right now. The Houston Rockets had a 10-point lead, or rather got outscored by 10 points in the fourth quarter. 